Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing, an assembly, and running off some test prints of this Artillery Sidewinder X2 printer. I'm really looking forward to it. I've never used one of these before, but it looks like it's got some pretty cool stuff. Let's go ahead and get going on putting this printer together and going over some of the specs that this thing has to offer. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this guy up. Now, as you can tell, this is a pretty large box because it's a decent sized printer. And uh, we'll take a look at that in a second. So the first thing we find in the box are instructions, which is great. We'll probably take a, a brief look at those. It's printed, a lot of diagrams, really nice. I like that, uh, so that's pretty cool. You also get a neat little nylon bag, uh, which you know usually you don't get. You just sort of get a little Ziploc. And of course, this is going to have uh, things like your USB cable. Uh, it's got some uh, extra, I think this is some tape we'll be using later on. Some bearings, your USB is in there. Of course, some extra um, little bolts, your angle irons there, and uh, no, pretty heavy duty actually, a uh, little wrench there, that's kind of neat. And there's a few other little things in here that we'll probably be using later on. But I like this little pouch, I think it's kind of neat. Let's not lose these things, we'll set them aside with the instructions. Now, next thing we have, this is the uh, filament runout sensor and the filament sort of spool holder. Okay, so there's some of the little pieces parts. Now it's going for the big stuff. So right off the bat, it looks like this thing is virtually put together because here we have our, uh, you know, our rails, we've got our top rail, we've got our hot end, we've got everything pretty much attached and ready to go. Uh, I think that's pretty neat, I like that. I'm gonna set that over here and go on for the rest. Okay, now we can go in there for the main part of the unit. And as you can see, this is an all-in-one machine. So the power supply, everything's all built in. I really like that. It takes up less space. I don't have a lot of space back there anymore in the shop. So this is going to be pretty neat. So let me get this sort of cleaned up. And then we'll go over some of the specs in this thing and start putting it together. Okay, so I like how this looks. It's very slim. Of course, you get your power in the back, your voltage setting in the back, which we'll, of course, check before we turn it on. USB is in the front. I like that. You don't have to be reaching around, especially if you don't have a lot of room and you really got these printers sort of like jammed together like I do back there if you've got multiple printers. Uh, this is really nice because you can just get your USB right there. So I like that. Bed-wise, what are we looking at? 300 by 300. It is you know, the tempered glass with that little mesh sort of uh, tactile um, texture is the word I'm looking for on it. Uh, I think it's funny, it's got a little thing here that says leave this piece of paper on during installation. I'm assuming so you don't scratch or bang up the glass. It's gonna get scratched when you're printing or at least marred. Uh, so I think this is kind of funny, but we'll leave it on. Uh, now let's take a look over here. Of course, we've got you know, the other business end of the printer. Uh, and here, of course, we've got a Titan extruder. We've got a Volcano uh, hot end. Uh, that is because this is not a Bowden printer. This is a direct drive printer. So you're going to be able to do things like, um, you're gonna be able to do TPU, other kind of flexible filaments, uh, things like that. So that is pretty cool. And we'll go over some of the other features, uh, but you know, right off the bat, that's great. I love a direct drive so that I can print PLA or I can go right over to TPU, whichever thing I want. I like that. Now, the other thing this printer has is a filament runout sensor. Uh, we looked at that a few minutes ago. This is part of it right here when we put this on top. Uh, it has uh, auto turn on. Uh, or auto restart after say the power goes out. But of course, remember if you're doing something like PLA or, or especially like TPU or something like that, or PTEG, uh, if this bed cools down too much, which it will, uh, then of course the print will pop off. So 
that I always find to be, you know, how good is it really? So those are some of the main things. We'll get a look at some of the other things that I think are kind of neat with this printer as we go along. But we're going to go ahead and put it together, if you want to call putting it together, because it is literally four screws and connecting some cables. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So we're going to connect these leads to the base of the model. And I like this. It's pretty interesting setup because this will feed everything we have going on in our extruder and our hot end. And uh, then we're going to flip it over and put the screws in. But what I also like is they put these zip ties on here just to make this thing so it's not sliding all over the place. And we have literally four screws to put in in the bottom. And this thing is put together. Now, you want to make sure that they're very tight and that you don't, uh, you know, just leave them loose because, of course, then you'll get a really crappy print. Then there are just a few cables to plug in for the motors, and you are done. You got a couple on the left, a couple on the right. And once those are plugged in, this thing is really put together. Of course, before you print, check your voltage and move it one way or another, remove the zip ties. Now on the dual axis rails, you have these couplers and these are supposed to reduce Z banding. They're new, they're from artillery. We'll have to see if they work. Now I love this bed, it's an AC heated bed and you can see the cable is very substantial and it has a nice track, did not skimp on this at all. If we look up here, we see we've got an extruder and we've got the a geared Titan style with a hot end, which is like a Vulcan style. And it also has a BL touch and it is direct drive. Now here's this cabling I was telling you about. This is the thing that connected to the base of the model. So it's all in one cabling. So it accepts regular USB and micro USB. And let's take a look at the build plate. Now again, this is a 300 by 300 by 400. It has that tempered glass, it's textured. It's also built right on, so there's no clips or anything. Then we're gonna put together the spool holder. And I would suggest putting this together not on the unit like I did. Uh, I would follow the instructions uh, because I found it a little bit more tricky. As you can see how I'm putting this together, uh, I've gotta then unscrew it, just do it the right way, put it together, off of the unit and then <laughs> put it on the unit. Now I'm gonna connect the filament runoff sensor and you can see the swivels cause it's gonna be moving back and forth. And I have to say, I like this injection molded branded top piece. Now we're gonna just make sure we checked our voltage, <laughs> plug in the unit and get ready to print. Ah, oh, that's very satisfying, isn't it? Taking that piece of plastic off. And it starts right up. Nice little logo there, standard screen here, standard controls, but it is a nice uh, crisp color screen. First thing we're gonna do before we level this is preheat it. You can see you can switch between the bed and the extruder with those buttons and raise or lower your temperature. Of course, that depends on what type of filament you're using. This is PLA, so I'm gonna put it right at 200. I'm now gonna manually level it, and that's using those buttons to move it to the sides. And you've all seen this before, but if you haven't, this is how you start to level the bed. Even though it has auto bed leveling, you wanna get a baseline here and just run it from each corner and set up your level. And then you can adjust the Z height by small increments uh, later after it goes ahead and does the automatic leveling. Uh, but especially right out of the box, you always want to do this first because you don't know, you know, how much these things have moved uh, in in the process of shipping or where it was set to. But as long as you go through and do this process first, you know you will be okay in the end. Now, again. Sometimes uh, I might forget to do this. The one time I did forget to do this, uh, I don't know what happened in shipping. I don't even remember actually which printer it was, but I do know that that, <laughs> that hot end came down so hard on that bed. Uh, luckily, it was like a plastic bed, uh, like a plastic magnetic bed. It still ruined it. So make sure you always do the leveling first. I had to actually order a new uh, base for that, uh, but... This is actually pretty close. I'm doing very, very minimal leveling. And now we're done. And we hit home and we make sure we just check our center and everything is fine there. Little tight, but I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit here and there. And this is really the process you're gonna have to do really just once, uh, unless it gets really off kilter. Now we're gonna go to uh, more. We're gonna hit the auto level. 
Now, I have, of course, sped this up, but uh, it has uh, a, you know, pretty quick motor as this thing's going through, and it's just going to go through each point and make sure that the Z height is okay. Again, you might have to tweak it a little bit in the end, and that you'll just use this one right here, the Z height, and then you want to save that to make sure it's got the lowest or the most correct um, Z height. Now, this is the only thing I thought was a little fiddly. The filament runout sensor is so close to the top of that that it kind of gets in the way to get the filament through. That is like the most minor complaint. Now, we're going to go ahead and put it through the hot end and use the gear on the side here to push the filament through. Now, you can do that through the software, but I like to just, you know, run it through like this. And it passed through the hot end. And look at this. There's white, but with time black. That means they actually tested this before they shipped it, which I like. Now it comes with a nice little metal USB. We're going to pop that in. We're going to hit print. We're going to choose this little cube I'm printing and confirm. And I got to tell you, this is probably, no, not probably. This is the quietest printer I have ever owned. It is incredibly quiet. Now let's take a look at some of the prints I got off this thing. So I've been running that Sidewinder crazy because I've got a, a new series I want to be doing on, on different ways that you can smooth out prints. So I'm just printing helmet after helmet after helmet and it is just killing it. I'm really liking it. Um, you can see this is going to be something I'm going to be working on from uh, a pair, a Phantom of Paradise. But this side of this, this whole back area is so smooth. I am just crazy impressed. Now the top part's got, you know, a lot of wear on it just because I printed it upside down and when I tore it away, I did it a little too roughly. So that's gonna, you know, a little bit of sanding there. But um, really impressed with how well this printer is doing. And of course, since it's a direct drive, and it, usually it would be right here. When I do these videos at the end, I have the printer here, but it's printing. So I didn't want to <laughs> unplug it and bring it over. Um, but I even, since it's a, a direct drive, uh, I even printed some uh, TPU. This was for uh, a bodysuit for something. Uh, and usually sometimes, you know, with flexibles, it's hit or miss. Uh, I printed two or three of these and some other pieces. Um, and it just printed them. Uh, really, really impressed. This was um, Zealtech um, TPU. I also printed, I wanted to print a range of things, so I also printed uh, some uh, Pet G. So this is something um, from uh, Apex Legends. This is one of the ticks. You can get these, this file, well, all these files uh, on uh, 3dprintedprops.com. But this is going to be a leg. And again, you know, uh, I used the, the profile right in Cura and uh, tweaked it a tiny bit just for infill and whatnot. Uh, and... Again, it just printed that PETG so nicely. Again, you know, you always have to do sanding if you want to get them as smooth as I like to get my prints smooth. But, you know, this is one of the smoothest prints I've ever gotten. Uh, this Phantom of the Paradise, how, how smooth it is in the back. Same thing with this guy here, the um, Red Guardian. Now, I also printed something I've always wanted to print but just never have because I like to print helmets and stuff. I don't usually print these uh, sort of working things, but I printed one of these uh, torture toasters um, and it is crazy because the gears work awesome. All of the um, infill setting things work, the, the tolerances work, I mean to say. You can push up and down and the toast comes out. Um, and if you're not familiar with these, I'll put links to how to get it uh, in the description below. But it prints flat, so these gears open up, and it just prints like this, and then you can put it together. And again, it printed it out really, really well. Uh, minimal ghosting, and I was printing this at 70 millimeters a second. Um, again, the gears all work. So you can turn them and move the print around the way you need to, as long as you got it in there right. There you go, that was my fault. Uh, again, toast pops up. 
everything on it works really, really well. Even the, uh, the text uh, on the side is very, very sharp with minimal ghosting. And I was printing this at a pretty good clip. So I found one of my new favorite FDM printers, I think. Um, because like I said, I have now printed uh, one, two, I've got uh, three, but I've, I'm working on it. It's in the garage right now. Uh, and then four is over here, plus a lot of little things that I needed uh, for test things. And yeah, I'm really, really liking it. So if you're interested in it, uh, check it out. Um, I, again, it's something that uh, I had never used one before. I'd never got to, to review one before. And having it now the past couple of months and running probably about I don't know, six or seven spools through. Uh, I've had one print failure. That was my fault, I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, and everything else is just printed like gangbusters. Really, really happy with it. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please click like and subscribe. Hit that little bell and you'll know when the next one's going to come out. And I'm going to be trying to get more and more videos out. I'm actually ahead. I've got probably like five or six videos shot and that I'm editing. So I'm really, really excited about that. And again, I want to thank all you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day and take it easy.